So we're going to talk about a very important um, class of problems for differential equations, and that's the initial value problem. Okay, we've seen before how you could get uh, one parameter family of solutions for a first order differential equation or n parameter family of solutions for uh, nth order differential equation. And we wonder how to fix these parameters. Well, the initial value problem gives us a way to fix these parameters to get a particular solution, okay? Many curves solve differential equations, uh, but sometimes you just want one curve that's running through a point, okay? Or sometimes there are multiple curves that run through a particular point. And so uh, we could visualize and imagine the initial value problem with a sort of physics problem, right? Suppose we throw a ball up or down in the air, neglecting air resistance. Now, this is a second order differential equation in position, okay? This is just Newton's law. Newton's law tells us that, uh, the second law tells us that F equals MA. We can plug in negative MG on the left-hand side for gravity and on the right-hand side Instead of A, we write the second derivative of position with respect to time. And we have ourselves a diff second order differential equation. We could have also looked at this as a first order differential equation uh, in velocity. But let's just stick to uh, the, the second order in position. Okay. Now... Someone tells you they're throwing up a ball and to predict its position. Okay, what are you going to need intuitively? So if you throw up the ball at different heights, you're going to get different trajectories, right? So if you move, if, if you throw up the ball and your hand is higher, well, it's going to look like a different trajectory, right? Clearly, you started from a higher position. Um, if you throw the ball faster, initially, it's going to go up higher. Okay, that's also intuitive. And so, if we give someone the information that the initial position of where we throw the ball is, say, S0, we're going to throw the ball from here, and the initial velocity, which is the first derivative of position with respect to time. The initial velocity is also given. Intuitively, we should be able to predict the trajectory of the ball, right? You got the initial position, you got the initial velocity, and you are able to uniquely predict the trajectory, okay? So that, that's the intuition behind the initial value problem. More formally, the initial value problem is given by this definition. On some interval containing x0, which in our previous example you can think about it as the initial time, right? The problem of solving an nth order differential equation subject to n side conditions specified at x0. Okay, so you want to solve. This differential, of course, this is given in normal form here. Not every differential equation can be written in normal form, but let's assume we can. So we want to solve this differential equation where f could be any complicated expression of uh, these variables, the, the independent variable and the uh, dependent variable and its n minus 1 derivatives, subject to y at x0 is equal to y0, y prime at x0 is equal to y1, dot, 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 all the way to y n minus 1, where y0, y1, yn minus 1 are arbitrary constants is called an nth order initial value problem. The values of yx and its first n minus 1 derivatives at x0 are called initial conditions. So in our previous example, we have a second order differential uh, equation. So we have, and we specify what the initial position is, so at s of t naught, we have s naught in a s prime at t naught, which is which is just the, the velocity, right? 
at T naught is S1, okay? Uh, we just use S1 here to kind of stay consistent with the notation here instead of say V, V naught, we, we use S, S1. And so you give the initial position, you give the initial velocity, you got yourself uh, the trajectory, okay? And, and so this is what the initial value problem is. You, and notice this is second order differential equation. So we specified the, the uh, zeroth order, if you will, di di uh, derivative, which is just the function itself, and the first order derivative, okay? At the initial point t naught. And this is exactly what we're doing over here, okay? So explore the solution of this differential equation that runs through the point 0 minus 1. Okay, this is not an interval, it's a point. As a function, B as a solution of the differential equation, and C as a solution of the initial value problem. Okay, so there's several ways to look at solutions to this. So using separation of variables, which we will talk about more, in the future, but just sort of giving you a preview there, we're able to get a one parameter family of solutions using separation of variables, okay? And uh, this isn't the general solution, okay? You could see that it's not the general solution because the trivial solution y equals zero is singular. It does not, you can't get y equals zero from fixing c in, in any way. Okay, and uh, we want to see what solutions runs, runs through the point 0 minus 1, which is this point here, okay, if we plot it. We impose condition y of 0 equals negative 1, okay? So many different curves, like we want to fix C. How do we fix C? Well, we know that we, the, the uh, solution must run through 0, negative 1 which that means uh, at x equals 0, y is equal to negative 1. And this is exactly uh, that expression there. Tr we're translating the idea of running through that point to this expression. And so on the left-hand side, we plug in a 0 for y, and we get y over 0 squared plus c. This is the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we get negative 1. Where did we do that? Where would we get that from? the fact that um, we have to run through this point. And we could then solve for c, and c, get, c is negative 1, so we have this, okay? Now, what is that? Well, if I just plot y is equal to 1 over x squared minus 1, I get this function here, okay? It's a function for every x. I get a, a, a y, 1y except for at the points negative 1 and 1 where, they're, where the function is not defined, right? Because we can't define um, the function. We can't divide by 0. And so as a function, this is how it looks, okay? This is how that, um, uh, if we just plot this naively, this is what we get. But what about as a solution to the differential equation, okay? Well, we can't have discontinuities. Remember, a solution has to have continuous, if it's an nth order differential equation, it has to have continuous derivatives up to the nth order. And so if you're going to run through um, negative 1 or 1, you're going to get a, um, a um, asymptote, okay? And you're going to uh, have the function not defined there, right? The solution, that, that can't be a solution. So we have to choose either the interval 1 to infinity, okay? But this solution here, this solution curve, does not solve the initial value problem because it's not going through the point 0, negative 1. Okay, so that's out. Likewise, for the green there, that is a solution curve, okay? You can have this for i's, in, in, you know, you could put it in the differential equation. It solves the differential equation, no problem. Uh, and it is defined from minus infinity to minus 1. But the problem comes from 
not running through the point zero negative one. Finally, here in pink, this is actually the solution to the differential equation. Okay, this solution curve here. Okay, so uh, uh, all three of these are solution curves to the differential equation and valid solutions to the differential equation, but only this point, which is, only this curve, which we draw here in, in blue, is a solution also to the initial value problem. So this gives you that different layers. Okay, first we looked at it as a function. Then we looked at how this would uh, be for so solutions. Okay, and we saw that as long as it's defined on an interval and has continuous derivatives, then we're fine. Uh, but more specifically, if we want a solution to the initial value problem where uh, y uh, at x equals 0 is negative 1, well then that leaves us only one choice uh, for all these three segments and that's just the middle one because that's the only point that runs, that's the only curve, solution curve that runs through 0, negative 1. 